Okay, we've come outside. Uh, we've moved the old girl back. I don't know why I'm calling her old. She's supposed to be new. Uh, a couple of things we've done. We've put a clamp meter around the ground cable going to the battery. And I don't know if we can get that on camera. But so at the moment that is reading 0 0.8 amps. It's uh, not easy to get onto the video. It's, uh, come on, son. There we go, we can just see it there 0 0.8, 0 0.9 amps. We've also put a multimeter reading millivolts. So that's 7 millivolts, and I'm reading that from the battery terminal down to an earth point. Uh, so I'm actually looking at the volt drop across the earth cable as another means of measurement. I've uh, taken a, a couple of sample readings at a higher current rate and some of the currents so I can plot a curve just to work out what the relationship is, just to give us a little bit more insight when we get down to very low currents. But at this moment we're theoretically pulling 800 milliamp from the battery. Uh, the car is charging and we come back to the, the Rolex charger which we've been doing a little bit of work on. Um, you can see it's connected here. Um, if you've seen my first video, you've seen me talk about my uh, little lead which I made up that allows me to simulate a car. At the moment it's being used as a 13 amp socket um, just to put a separate supply from the house to the car. So if we trip any circuit breakers, it's not going to disrupt the house. Um, before we did this test I actually uh, used uh, another meter which I've got here. Uh, <laughs> This is a, a meter which allows me to do the earth loop impedance test and earthing checks and also it will allow me to check how fast the RCD operates on that circuit. Hence the real reason why we have a 13 amp plug socket there on that test lead as it just allows me to plug that meter into any lead and do a very quick test actually from the position of the car. So anyway we're sat there and um, we have used the little resistor um, potentiometer to reduce the current and we've dropped the current down. It's, it's charging about 9 amps at the moment. Uh, the car will be happy with that. The car is nearly fully charged anyway. So what we're now going to do is we're going to switch this off and we're going to leave it for a little while. And we'll switch it off uh, using the app and we'll turn it off using the sun off uh, control. And uh, we'll probably leave it for 30 40 minutes, that's normally enough for my car to go to sleep. And we'll see if this device will wake it up. And then, while we're doing that, we'll set some other bits of kit up the oscilloscope and things. As I'm going to try a slightly different way of controlling it, and uh, we'll see what results we get with that. So, uh, we'll continue this video in a, in a short while. Cheers! Okay, we've uh, come back to the MG and we've uh, waited a, a short period of time and at the moment our battery current has subsided sort of right down, in fact I'm struggling to get a reading now uh, on the clamp meter it's telling me it's zero and on my multimeter it's zero milliamp drop so it's, it's quite low current now drawing. Uh, coming back down to the charger I've programmed the charger with a sun off switch to actually uh, start the charge at 5 minutes uh, past 12 I believe. Um, so we've, we've probably got a little while to wait. Uh, obviously I need the phone to uh, do the charging as well so what we're going to do is we're going to look at the scope here for a while while this, this time's out. And hopefully uh, we should see it start. Okay. It's, it's certainly did something there. Oh, well, it has started. Yep, it uh, looks like I may need to make some adjustments on my scope. I should have probably done that beforehand to, uh, to get it to be a reasonable looking picture. But, uh, okay, so yep, there we go. We can, uh, well, we can see our, our square wave going, it's, it's there. Uh, again, this is our zero volt level here, and we can see we've got a very short pulse width at the top because I've turned the charger down. If you remember, we're uh, running the charger off a, a 13 amp plug, uh, so I've actually used the, the pot which I was showing earlier to turn the charge rate down. Um, 
but uh, well yeah that's the car has uh, started to charge you know there is no denying that the car is charging uh, I'm just coming back up to see uh, yeah our battery discharge current now is uh, well 1.8 1.7 amps we've got 7 millivolt drop so that uh, by initiating that charge the then there's a little bit of power coming out of the battery uh, yeah well that seems to have been quite successful uh, that's the the pulse width this is the the dumb Rolex charger which we fitted the, uh, the sun off switching and it's now done a time charge uh, my car was off for a little over 30 minutes I believe I can check those figures later and normally that is enough for my car to go to sleep I've supposedly got the latest revision of software but I'm beginning to wonder uh, but yeah you know past experience normally 15 minutes and my car is asleep and that certainly woke it up right there is uh, another little test I'm interested in doing uh, I don't know if I can do that while we're actually here um, yeah I want to remove the earth from the Rolex charger and we'll see what happens uh, I'll tell you what we'll do uh, we're going to end the video there and we'll do that as another segment and I'll just get all that set up okay well uh, that was actually easier than I thought well there is the earth wire um, and as you can see it's made absolutely no difference to the charge of the car so it would appear that the car onboard charger does not check whether there is an earth connection it doesn't really surprise me and as we pointed out earlier with this charger there is nothing actually in this charger to confirm that you have an earth connection so this charger at the moment is charging the car with no earth connected at all so it's totally earth free charging the vehicle um, the earth leakage circuit breaker um, yeah well that ain't going to do a lot because if there is no earth path down to earth uh, for the current to flow if there's any damage to the cable that won't trip it needs to see uh, it needs to see an imbalance in the currents going into it between the live and the neutral for that to operate and yeah that is one of the issues so you folks out there with one of these chargers if you've got an earth rod you need to make sure that that cable is connected to that earth rod um, and that will probably come into uh, what I would say at least an annual test if not a six monthly test to make sure that the earth on your system is good um, but yeah well we'll we'll stop the video there for a moment and uh, we'll see where we go in a minute cheers <laughs> 